so yeah. good to see you. It's good talking on the telephone. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to talking to you because you've got a very interesting background. And I, I, I was at your sites. I've been busy and so forth. They're both very rich. Uh, and in the audience, welcome very, very much to Conversation. A great distinct pleasure. Welcome to the program. Dr. Robert D. Solomon, Ph.D., and he was associated with MIT. And he's a, um, well, he's a comprehensivist or a generalist and an intellectual and is interested also in a great number of understandings of the human condition within maybe perhaps even larger context of understanding events in universe, I might suggest. And um, he's a very interesting person, very knowledgeable, and Robert, welcome very, very much Thank to you. Conversation. Thank you. Very nice to be here. Wonder if you could, as a way to wade into our hour-long conversation, mm -hmm. uh, were you born and raised, and that sort of thing, some of the education, and then we'll talk about some of the people that have given inspiration to our thinking mm -hmm. and uh, uh, about the human condition. But your own background, please, if you would. Sure. Well, I was uh, raised in Brooklyn mm -hmm. and went to Brooklyn Technical High School. And in a sense, that summarizes a little bit of what I'm all about, okay. which is a little bit of thinker and a little bit of tinkerer. Mm -hmm. And so uh, at Brooklyn Tech, you could, for example, start out in a situation where you're doing very practical uh, ma machine shops, mm -hmm. foundry, what have you, and yeah. then you'd suddenly go into physics labs and chemistry and mathematics, uh -huh. and then you'd go into English, and if it's taught properly, English is more like philosophy and psychology, right. and then you'd go into history classes, and if it's taught right, which it was over there, you get into economics and you get into uh, sociology uh -huh. as well. So there, I was able to sustain a very generalist uh, education, uh -huh. and then uh -huh. that kind of carried on, so I've always been a generalist, okay. and, and, and the the world of horror is generalist. They, I know. They yeah. say things like you're a mass, you're jack of all trades and master of none. Heard it a million times. But they don't they don't say that you're a master of many trades, but you're not a specialist of any particular trade. That's so interesting. You, and you can be a multi master nowadays. Uh -huh. It's not uh -huh. too difficult. Yeah, and a pattern recognizer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Between yes. systems. Yes. Yeah. And then uh -huh. you start to see commonality. Mm -hmm. So when you learn one field, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to learn another field if you can learn it more at an abstract level. Uh -huh. And you uh -huh. then begin to see the similarities of these different fields. Yeah. So uh, that so that carried on, and then I yeah. uh, over over at MIT I continued the generalist type of approach. That's kind of a jump, if I may. Was yeah. the family intellectually oriented, encouraging? And yes. also, I wonder yes. we used to have the Bronx uh, uh, High School of uh, Science or mm -hmm. something, which was a a, a, a a distinct place. It was very very special. Mm -hmm. It was very. I uh, had a very high reputation. And you had Stuyvesant as well. St and the same Stuyvesant now, but it was mm -hmm. particularly the Bronx science. That was the thing they had uh, uh, getting in. It right. had, uh, they, they, they took the best in that. Was it the same with Brooklyn Tech? Yes, yes. It, it was, was the same okay. exam for all three schools. And you have Polytechnic over there now, yes, too, which that's is a true. serious place. That's correct. Yeah. That's, that's and true. So that, but, and the family setting, were they encouraging of things intellectual and yes, so forth? Yes, yes. Were they professional people or what? Your dad? Yes, on that? yes. Could you share it, just brief? Uh, in a, my father was in accounting okay, uh -huh. and uh, worked in the city for, for all of his life. Mm -hmm. And my mother, uh, her, her main distinction is she reads a book a day, and she's now you know, well in her 90s, and she's still reading a book a that's day. That's a lot okay. of books so, under so the book. So that's a lot of books. Yeah. That's right, a lot of different things, is a lot she's of still different living? concepts. Yes. Oh, one in yes. her 90s. Yes. Read a book a day yes. or better than still, an apple a day? Still reads a book a day. Better than yeah. an apple a day. Better than an apple, better apple, apple a day. day. Yes. Yeah, well, yes. that's wonderful. So I think the family setting is important yes. because you're obviously interested. And MIT, uh, you went there undergrad or grad? No, or? I, I was there for grad. I did mm -hmm. three degrees there. And okay. uh, basically, I was able to m keep the generalist going. Mm -hmm. But at MIT, it's harder to do it because you're, tr you're, tr you're supposed to become, as you get to be a PhD, mm -hmm. you're supposed to become more and more of a specialist. And uh, yeah. my, my problem with being a specialist is you get to know more and more and more and more, and then eventually you know every you know uh, everything about nothing. Mm. You know you well, begin to get, and and so uh, you don't true. you don't get up in the helicopter yeah. and see all of the various You're other fields and their from connections. You're thinking that way, uh, if I may. And Bucky Fuller used mm. to say that he mm. he used you say generalist. Mm -hmm. That's the one way. It, it all you could say a comprehensive. Yes, or my, I like I like the I have a, I have a little cube. And yeah, okay. In fact, that little cube's how we got going, mm -hmm. and that is multidisciplinary. Okay. And, okay. and uh, we can talk about it later. But in my company, we started doing a lot of different products, and that was multidisciplinary. Yeah. So it involves all different kinds of electronics and software, mechanics, and optics, and also human factors, mm -hmm. and that's that dimension. 
And then the other dimension uh, is inter, so it's mm -hmm. like international, intercultural, mm -hmm. inter-industry, mm -hmm. and you begin to pick up all of the different aspects of that. And then there's cross-functional, mm -hmm. which is the different functions in society. So it'd be the CEO, the salesperson, the marketing person, mm -hmm. all of the, the lawyers, the legal, mm -hmm. uh, uh, manufacturing, mm -hmm. these are all the different. So I always look at that cue because anybody, when they have a CV or whatever, they're pretty much telling you where they are, what little cell they are in that cube. Uh -huh. and, uh -huh. uh, and when people look at CVs, they're, they're looking for somebody who's consistently in a particular area. Yeah, and you, you, ha you, have, you have two, two uh, trillennium.com mm -hmm. yes. is a site of yours. Yes. T-R-I-L-L-E-N-N-I-U-M. Right, like third millennium. Like, like third, third millennium. millennium. So we're, 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 we always say, tell our clients we're reaching out into the future and bringing some of it back here that's for like us to practically use in this day and age. That's very good. You're futurist. Mm. And uh, Buckminster Fuller was, I yes. think. He was a futurist, and he used to say uh, anticipatory design mm. science was his way of approaching things for a good deal of his life, and he's somebody you and I both were yes. uh, highly recommend in terms of trying to get an understanding mm. of things, and that's very important. And he used to say, I, they have a, thi a term, uh, divide and conquer, mm. and you can intellectually divide and conquer. He said in education automation that the people who run the world, mm. the Illuminati, or yes. whatever you want to call them, the kings of old and so forth, the emperors, mm. um, they, they can divide and conquer. They're not worried particularly about the dollars. Well, the, divi the divide and conquer actually s can be a very bad thing. It's given us the wonderful systems we have. Yeah. A lot of it's modeled after the Roman system, just like the church is modeled after the Roman system, very hierarchical and so forth. Uh -huh. But the problem with divide and conquer, I mean, your, your very dumb cancer cells divide and conquer. That's true. And unlike bacteria, which get to eat the corpse after it's dead, yeah. the d cancer cells die when the body dies. And mm -hmm. so their dividing and conquering isn't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, dividing and conquering to, for example, takes fields and break them down into areas and subjects and departments and you get people who are very compartmentalized. Yes. Well, well, the problem and the reality is something which spans this, this arbitrary division. Mm -hmm. And it gets into uh, having a much more holistic, a much more multidisciplinary view of the problem. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you want to get rid of, uh, solve the environmental problem, it's not a chemistry problem alone, it's not a physics problem, it's not a cosmology problem, it's not a political problem, it's all of these and a lot more. And in order to be able to handle them, it, you have to be able to take these specialists in these different areas and somehow connect them. And for that, you need more of a generalist. You need more of a bigger picture thinking. You can you like generalists more mm. than comprehensivists. Well, there are or, there you know, there I, mean, are I don't know aspects. if it makes a difference. I like I like cross-functional, multidisciplinary, inter cross-functional, uh, multidisciplinary, and inter systems recognition. Yes, interculture, and inter Hundred trillion cells in a human organism, and every cell matters, and they're all one system, yes, and so they all operate. And the thing to keep in mind is that most of your cells are not human. That's right. They're, they're bacterial. mostly bacteria. Yeah. Or and 80 percent of the yeast. evolutionary process was bacteria from that's about 3.8 billion that's years. That's it took kind of a long time to get here before we true. get the incredible variety mm. that has existed in coming out of evolution of consciousness to where they've got us. Yes, and, and it's all coded recent. in a relatively small genome. Oh, absolutely. So the yeah. information part of of the world is actually done very efficiently, and mm. just like the periodic table in chemistry. Mm -hmm. But Mendeleev. Yes, but but but, but but going on, uh, the, the issue of, of, of divide and conquer yeah. means that we, we are used to doing things in a very serial, sequential way. We linear? call it S-LAN. Oh. Linear, but yeah. it's serial, it's sequential, it's mm. dealing with pages. Mm -hmm. So think back to your, 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 uh, your education when you were in, in, uh, in school, K-12. Yeah. to 12. Yeah. As you progressed in kindergarten, I'm sure the walls were rich with all sorts of visual Bunny materials. And things, yeah. Right, I mean, maps and, mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and visual things. And then when you got to first grade, it got a little bit less. Mm -hmm. By the time you're probably at seventh or eighth grade, there wasn't that much on the walls except for a blackboard. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you were looking at single te textbook pages and you're reading things out of a little textbook page. Mm -hmm. And the kids nowadays are looking at a little screen for yeah. their computer. And they lack this big picture ability to go off and see enough things and see how they're connected and see the patterns and see the various connectivity of these things. Yeah, and there's, th there's different aspects mm. of that. You can become very specialized and some very knowledgeable, mm. very apt at doing one particular thing. Fuller is the one who said that they, uh, the ones who run the world, they were worried about the people coming up because uh, they were, weren't worried about the dollars so much as the ones who were smart. And they would uh, consciously fund graduate schools to get the best minds so specialized out on something which was required to be creative in terms of the 
use of the pluperfect tense in 13th century French poetry in the south yes, of France, yes, yes, that yes. they could think about that and devote a whole life to that, mm. and they wouldn't think about the whole connected well, pattern our way, our way and become a threat to those who have political exactly. and economic and that, power. Exactly, that's very true. Mm. I, th I think what, what, what you do is we, we talk about taking a high IQ person, mm -hmm. an exceptionally high intelligent person, mm. and in engineering we have this concept, uh, this notion of Q, which mm. is how television works. You have this narrow filter, mm. and the narrower the filter, the higher the Q, mm. and you're the able it's called the Q of a uh, filter. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's how narrow it is and how selective it is. Yeah. That's how you're able to select different radio channels or television oh, channels okay. and so on. Mm -hmm. So now if you think of the spectrum now being all of the different fields mm -hmm. ranging from economics and mathematics and the sciences and politics and so on, now they take a high IQ person who mm -hmm. might have had interest al along that entire spectrum uh -huh. and now they turn them into a high IQ filter to be specialized just in that one thing. And that will so keep them isolated from keep any... Them a able to understand anything like those who run the world do think right, that way right. and uh, they might become a threat to yes. the paradigm well, that supports the established exactly. order that maybe it's time for it to be subsumed in a larger system that might come out of intellectual uh, investigation and, but I and think, suggestion I th I think of there, there's human, always there's always been institutional a, structure right there's always been a trying to to there's been a, always a genocide of intellectuals there's mm -hmm. always been a genocide of people with new ideas mm -hmm. who threaten the established order and uh, when a queen bee emerges the mm -hmm. first thing she does is to sting all of the other existing queen bees and if one emerged at the same time they'll fight to the death or divide the hive is that right? yeah, yeah uh -huh. so there's a whole there's a whole concept of going on where where intellect is tied to power and uh -huh. the ability to create and come up with new ideas. Mm -hmm. For example, if we immediately developed a replacement for oil, mm -hmm. this would have a tremendous impact. It would be in the trillions of dollars. Mm -hmm. It would impact the fortunes of others. If, in fact, for example, you could free of charge get uh, get power from water, not that you Tesla, could. Tesla, or, or water, yeah. or Tesla. Or, or Tesla, or any, yeah. of, any of these things. Yeah. So, so, so intelligence is always tied to uh, invention and creativity, mm -hmm. which is tied to power. They always say that mother is the invention, is the, uh, that, 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 invention that, that uh, yeah. that, that, that necessity is the mother of invention. Thank you. But what yeah. they forget is that laziness is the father. Ah, so, yeah, so, yeah. so we're at a point now where as new things come about uh -huh. and create whole new industries, mm -hmm. uh, this is a threat, and mm -hmm. it's a threat politically. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how we got to, as a matter of fact, developing this notion of solving impossible problems. We, but your company. Yeah, and right, you, right. You we, we went off on a big quest about, uh, well, we started doing product development. This is coming out of MIT. How long this have you been doing something? You're in the private sector. Yes, we're in a private sector. Sector. Yeah. Trillennium is a decades old company. Okay. But when we started out, we were having fun doing products. And Good. the products we were doing were multidisciplinary. Uh -huh. So b here in Long Island, the toys for Ideal Toy Company, mm -hmm. when they were doing stuff, and, and uh, control systems for Foxborough, and quite a few f people. But it always involved fun, and it was always very multidisciplinary. Uh -huh. So that means it, inv as I said earlier, it involves all different kinds of engineering and human factors and what have you. Mm -hmm. Then we got involved in manufacturing automation to some degree, and oh we boy. started, that's when the robot was hot and so mm -hmm. on and we therefore could see how tons of different things were made and that got us into many many different industries yeah and then once we got into strategic planning and more of that type of stuff and occasionally we worked with some of the M&A guys when they were trying the the mergers and acquisition mergers people and acquisition, you know your, yeah. your infamous eye bankers yeah, when, they, right. when they were trying to go off and assess something they didn't quite have the technical depth mm -hmm. to understand the technology to understand the markets to understand the potential threats to understand and potential opportunities, so mm -hmm. we would go along in alongside them to make these assessments. Uh -huh. And that's at the point where we started to really notice this, this cross-functional, uh -huh. all of the different departments in the company and uh -huh. all of the different functions. Uh -huh. But after all of that happened, those three phases that gave us the multidisciplinary and the and the inter-industry with the manufacturing automation and then the, the cross-functional with the, with the strategic planning and all the different areas working directly for the CEO, then we found, I went off on a quest, mm -hmm. and I said, I'm, I've just seen hundreds of problems. We've worked for scores of companies. Mm -hmm. Why can't people come together to solve problems? Why can't they collaborate? Mm -hmm. And so this became a trying to understand why the impossible problems, the impossible to do, wasn't done. Mm -hmm. And we thought it was going to be, a, oh, maybe a six-month, a year project, mm -hmm. and it went on to be years because we discovered, it was like when you're designing an automobile engine, 
you might come up with cylinders and, and, and pistons that fire, and then you need a spark plug, and then you need a camshaft. Mm -hmm. and, all, and as you're developing, it, you need little pieces. Well, mm -hmm. that's what happened as we were trying to find out why people couldn't solve impossible problems. This was a separate venture from this the... Is, this, was done in, uh, this, this was funded inside Trillennium. Okay, this Trillennium. Funded, Trillennium Corporation funded it. And, and, yeah. and we found all groups all around the world, the Creative Problem Solving Foundation in Buffalo, New York, mm -hmm. out in the South Pacific and not existing at all in the United States, is a critical solving a critical problem solving group there are people worried about uh, mal uh, about um, um, uh, Machiavellian concepts there are people worried about politics there are mm -hmm. people groups we went to that were the early internet groups hypertext mm -hmm. uh, that were concerned about how people would put information in different kinds of forms mm -hmm. and and so uh, there were then there were groups who did neuroanatomy neurophysiology mm -hmm. understanding how the brain works how the eye saccades all trying to get to this problem what could why aren't people able to solve What's an problems eye it's the fastest muscle in your body. It's oh, what uh, causes your eye to do that. Uh -huh. It's a millisecond. Yeah. And so that's why if we have a great big screen of information like yeah. you had in kindergarten, yeah. your eye can randomly look across that screen and, and pick up and patterns, look at, pick up patterns pick pattern pick and see connections. And pattern recognition is very good. Exactly. We're very good at so that. So what do we do? Mm -hmm. We go ahead and we take what we had rich in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. all, of, all of us are born with these wonderful visual skills mm -hmm. and we degenerated them. We went ahead and we, we put on what, like blinders on a horse. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the fun things we have, I was going to bring a little video of it, mm -hmm. was uh, we call toilet paper tube views. Mm -hmm. So if you had the whole picture, the big picture, and you mm -hmm. wondered why aren't people solving this impossible problem, they each have their own little toilet paper tube looking at their own little section Tunnel of the problem. Tunnel vision, and they have the and CIA the won't talk to the I FBI exactly. and all that kind of stuff, exactly. and you can't get any kind of cross-referencing exactly. or systems re or, or synergistic resonance that's between right. parts of a system That's and yet right. do you like James Lovelock you're familiar he sees the world the whole universe mm -hmm. as Gaia as a single system yes that yes. it is all in fact yes. the Vedics mm -hmm. have been telling us mm -hmm. that it really is all one system mm -hmm. it's we who divide it down for convenience yes we divide it down but as I said earlier just think of the cancer cells dividing and conquering dividing and conquering isn't always good okay. now now I'm not any I'm I've, I've realized that you never want to take a position one way or another because Every there's a truth in everything, regardless how ridiculous it I might know sound. What you mean. And there's and there's fallacy and stuff, no matter how it sounds to be the the, the, the gospel. Oh. So basically, uh, uh, I think that the structures that we have, mm -hmm. this wonderful hierarchical system, we call it the hexi. It's made up of the government and media and belief systems like churches and educational systems and corporate you call systems. It the, what? the The hex hexi, the six hex institutions. Six six. The six so you divided world, uh, world societal institutional structure into six major into components. Into six major components. And what are they that you the, 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 As I was saying, the government, which would include the armies and the police and mm. all of that functions, the uh, the belief systems, which would include Religion. the churches and, and even Scientology and non-conventional uh, yeah. belief systems yeah. or, sus or superstitions. Yeah. There'd be the educational system, K-12, to academia, mm -hmm. the science community. Mm -hmm. There would be the uh, media, which mm -hmm. little bo little boys and girls are exposed to more quicker than anything else. Mm -hmm. There would be corporate and financial, All right. and then there's the whole area of medical. And I extend medical to include food, which mm -hmm. is a medicine in a sense, and then to include everything that that nurtures or fixes up the human body. How did you come to the six in your determination? It's, it's just of that it we so well, maybe it'll be a seven. Uh, That's it's been working for us. Yeah. I remember we started with five, and then we added media. This Within is just, trillennium, yeah, this huh? is just a way. And it was it was it a think tank? Yes, was it's, it's, it it's our tank? it's our think tank. So in other words, if a, if a CEO yeah, wants got to. A lot of engineers from MIT and so forth we, we, in there? We have, we, have, we, have a, we have a very varied staff of generalists. Mm -hmm. And we used to have specialists when we were doing product development, mm -hmm. but you don't need them anymore. Mm -hmm. It's the generalist that's very rare. Pattern and recognizing. The people who can sit down. Systems and, thinking? Yes, and more abstract thinking. Okay, so in other yeah. words, what abstract thinking is is that at some point you don't see the connection between things. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Let okay. me give you a point. Please. Uh, 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 let's take the concept of, of, of uh, you wanted to be able to come up with a core concept. So we come up with about three, four hundred of them mm -hmm. that span all different fields. So I'll give you a cute little one. Easy in, hard out. 
Okay. Easy in, hard out. Now, what do you know that's easy in, hard out? Well, when you're going fishing, the hook. Yeah. The hook goes into the fish, and yeah. it's, it goes in easy. It's hard to come out. Uh -huh. Arrows, you know, when you that's have right. bows and arrows, easy, easy to go flange, in, hard yeah. to come out. Mm -hmm. uh, when you want to jack up your car, you're mm -hmm. using a jack, and it's got a ratchet mechanism, that's or you're right. winding the old kind right. watches. It right. goes easy. Mm -hmm. Electronics, we have diodes. They mm -hmm. let electricity, current, one direction, not another. Mm -hmm. in, your, in your heating system in the basement, you've got a little flapper door. It lets that's the true. water in one way, not another. Okay. But uh -huh. you also That's have functional, yeah. it, but you also have a one-way street. So mm -hmm. yeah, the concept's taken. You also have marriage. It's easier to get married, harder to get divorced. Uh -huh. It's easier to hire people. It's harder to fire people. Okay, you've got a but, template. But yeah. now we jump up. Now we jump up. Now we get into legal. When mm -hmm. you look at contracts, what oh, the clauses well, are, uh, some that are go more one way, the other, tariffs, mm -hmm. uh, trade, mm -hmm. and then ultimately you get to nature where you'll always see the most beautiful complexity, which Maybe. is a membrane. Yeah. Now you've got a membrane that lets uh. all different kinds of biomolecules in one way, mm -hmm. not in the other way. Mm -hmm. So now here's where the abstract thinking comes in. Semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable or, yeah. or, or, or... Like or the cells of a human organ. Exactly. Or any organ. Or any like organ. Yeah. But it's also how people conduct their relationships with each other. That's interesting. If something's it's easy... It's a metaphor, too, right? Yes, it's a, meta for it's a very powerful model. Yes, for, it? It's a very powerful mm -hmm. metaphor, and it also shows the various imbalances, because easy in, hard out shows an imbalance in a relationship. Okay. So as a result of all of this, what happens? Uh, if you're more of an abstract thinker, let's mm -hmm. say you're a lawyer and you happen to have a kid who's taking a course in biology mm -hmm. and one weekend you picked up their book and mm -hmm. you saw this, all of these complex things that are going on in the membrane, mm -hmm. you might get an idea that says, why don't I develop a new clause, a new concept that applies in a legal sense. Right. Uh, okay. so, so abstract oh. thinking, when you can get up there and see these basic ideas which are ap applicable across all fields, then you begin to import and export from different fields and you get different ideas. And that's also pattern recognition. It is pattern Don't recognition. Don't pattern recognition as part of cyber development? That's when neural networks and things that yeah, have come yeah. down the pike. That was the early Look. artificial intelligence, folks. Okay, Very yeah, early okay. artificial intelligence. In mm. fact, my master's thesis at MIT mm. was how would you build a human brain out of a piece of silicon? And it got into some of the first basic processes. In other words, could you build silicon life? Was that before? Well, that was Intel was here and everything and all that. Yeah, and but, but only, only if you looked at the thesis, only now certain things are being adopted, you know, decades later, such as uh, uh, multi-core computers. What we realize is that you had to have much quad like core, the human like they, quad they're core. They're out in the market now. Yeah, they're out in I the market. I got one on my desk. Yeah, but they right. should have had them years ago. And they, the price They, they didn't see our, my thesis, but basically mm -hmm. what it got into is that if you took the model of the neurons in the brain mm -hmm. and you had a billion or a hundred billion little computers mm -hmm. all operating at low power and all operating slowly. Mm -hmm. So you make it slower, you make it operating at very low power mm -hmm. so they don't heat up. Heat's always the big problem. Did you take, did you take lessons from the human brain? We, uh, and we're coming to understand the human brain in a way. Like in the last 50 yeah. years, 50 years ago we didn't know there were such things as neurotransmitters. Well, the, the, the doubling going on in various well, fields in, is, a, yeah. I think, I, I don't know the exact number, but I suspect it's about five years is the doubling that's going on in, in understanding the human brain. Hmm. So that well, means every five years we double the, all of the information we've known to date. Oh, right. That's, we've and done so that. Victoria yeah. uh, Gregorian talks about that. Yes. He was at Brown now. He was at Library of... But yeah, it's true. But I mean, the, th the point being, we're here 200,000 years, mm. human society, human beings as right. a species, and we've gone 10,000 generations, and everything is now moving almost exponential in everything. terms of our population is exponential, everything. information I don't know, is the exponential. Population seems to be leveling uh, off at least. Well, the well, there are, there are parts of the world where it still is exponential. Yeah, well, particularly where it's agriculture on that. Sure, all you have to have is more than two kids, and you'll I be exponential. I remember talking to Jay Forrester about that way mm. back when, who I understand you're friends with. Yes. Pass on the best regards. No, I certainly okay, will. And everything like that. But I mean, we didn't know. We thought the brain. If I get me straight, because you're you're learning neural nets mm. and so forth, and you're learning computers, and you're applying biological models from the from that. But there's ten to the tenth power neurons in the human brain. Ten to the eleventh. Ten to the eleventh is right. the eleventh, really. Okay. Yes, it's a hundred billion. But but there's a very interesting thing to keep in mind. Uh -huh. That's a very funny number. There's a hundred billion neurons uh -huh. in your human brain. Okay. There's a hundred billion, roughly, stars in our galaxy. I know that. And really there's a hundred billion galaxies. Yeah, isn't it? And that the ratio of your body. Maybe the universe trying to tell well, us the pattern. Well, the ratio of your body <laughs> to the to the distance to to the ratio of your body 
height to the distance from the Earth to the Sun uh -huh. is 10 to the 11th, and the ratio of your body to a proton electron is 10 to the 11th, and we can go on and on Send and on. Send me a link to that, would you? Do well, you it's, have it's it our stuff. Convenient? It's our stuff. No, but is yeah. it there? This I, I will be that happy thing. to share if that with you. If you would send it to me after, right, you know, because that that that's very interesting yes, to me. Yeah. Those are patterns. Well, every time you take a breath of air, you, you, you breathe in 100 billion, 100 billion molecules, and in the total atmosphere around the Earth mm. is 100 billion, 100 billion, 100 billion, 100 billion, 10 to the 44. Send me that. Will so you, have a graph total, or you have it on graph or a table or something? Yeah, I'll be happy to get you. I'll get you I would some like to do that. That's the kind of thing I like. That's patterns, right? But I thought it was 10 to the 10, just 10 to the 11th. But And we used to think that they were hardwired. Right. And we don't, and we did not know there was mm. a synaptic cleft between mm. the axions, mm. and that there are neurotransmitters that their uptake and their existence mm. in any state of human mind, mm. uh, from joy to anger to sorrow, mm. it will have a certain ratio of neurotransmitters and uptake in the synaptic cleft between them, and it's not hardwired at but, that level. The state of human consciousness. That's right. That's it's right. very fun. Now we understand. Mm. I think it was only about 40 years ago. And they, they, they discovered the first acetylcholine, I think. Mm. Then you got serotonin and dopamine and all these things. So we're learning that thing. And is even even the now we're, we're, we're learning. That, we're learning. Do whole those other things, things we learn from biology apply to mm. cyber, and that kind of thing? Do we take lessons from the biological understanding of the universe and so forth in terms of cybernetic developments? Well, as you or know, there's a, the there's, a, there's a there's a there's a there's a area that we call the singularity that yes. you've heard of, and we we've got a project which is very very quiet, uh, under wraps. We call it Sintel, which mm -hmm. used to stand for Silicon Intelligence, and now we call it Sintel, which stands and for which stands for a, 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 a sentient being, a sentient computer. And when sentient. and okay. within the next 20, 30 years, I know you've spoken to Kurzweil. Over mm -hmm. the next 20, 30 years, we will reach a point where the computers will get so complex, so evolved, so that they That's will the become self-aware. And yeah. at that point, we have a new life form on a new conscious life form. Yeah, that's a, very important. Very, very also, they're, they're talking about instantiating, and they have mm -hmm. ocular things, or they yeah. uh, audio things that yeah. are already there. But but what really what really excites and me, and it's instantiated within the human brain. That's right. Yeah. That's right. The thing excites what me, though, is, is what you were saying earlier, is that we are the same person as Jefferson or uh, or, uh, or, 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 Pen or Benjamin Franklin or Galileo, and that we haven't really evolved, and now we're in a world where the amount of information has gone up by a hundred billion, a yeah, trillion. and increasing. So how do we as humans, I mean, what's our, what are our, what are our rates? What's, what, how would you characterize a human, much like if you had a car and you knew how many miles per gallon it could mm -hmm. take, how big its tank was? Yeah. What's a human all about? Uh -huh. Well, we know that a human can listen and speak at roughly 120 words a minute. We go down south, it's slower. We go into parts of New York, it's much faster. Much faster. Much faster, mm. okay. And we know that we can uh, read and write, type, uh, or keyboard nowadays versus mm. writing, but we, you could keyboard and write roughly at about the same rate, about 120 about words. About as fast you can talk. About one, yeah, about as there fast as you can talk. recognition technology now. Whereas the human eye mm. is mm. taking in its big, beautiful, built-in HD dis, you know, I know. Uh, camera. Every day, Robert, I walk up and I, I wake up and I am amazed that anything exists. Yes. In all the wondrous oh. variety and so well, forth. You gotta it's be, just you gotta unbelievable. You've got to be thankful. You've you got to appreciate it. Yeah, you, you've it's really, amazing. You, you've got to. The, the, the that this has evolved. The way, the way I've got folks to appreciate is when I would give a talk, I would get up in front of the room and I would tell the folks that I had just seen my doctor. Mm -hmm. And he told me that I was terminal. Mm -hmm. And so the whole audience would go quiet. Mm. And some would be sympathetic and others would get a bit uncomfortable. And I'd go on. He said, yeah. He said, I might only have a few days. I could go at any moment. Mm -hmm. I might have only a few days. Mm -hmm. And, and at, you know, at most a week, a month. You know, I might have a few years. I might have a few decades. But no way was I going to have over 70, 80, 90 more years. Uh -huh. And now the audience relaxes. They realize I'm talking not about me. I'm talking about them. I'm talking about not everyone. It's terminal. And so, and so the Oh, and so we're all terminal, and mm. so someone gets pancreatic cancer, knows it's three to six yeah, months, yeah. whatever. So yeah. you have you have twenty to eighty years. That's a good grabber. That'll so get their attention. It gets right? their attention, get their but but it, but it gets them to realize. It <laughs> yeah. gets, I tell every cab driver in New York that yeah. I see. Appreciate those those sunsets. Yes, every golden those, those, moment, those, right? Those, those sunsets. Yeah, appreciate, right. Appreciate yeah. whatever the weather is and mm -hmm. so forth. So it's mm -hmm. an appreciation. But getting back to this, this whole concept of 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 the of the our speaking and, and listening and reading and writing, 
and our incredible limitation, imagine mm. now we're being bombarded by a mm. hundred billion times what would be in the Alexandria Library of right. Information, which yeah. was known at that time. Mm. And the only way that we found, and the, this is what our quest showed, was that we have to go into the visual dimension. Go into visual. We well, have to be able to have those saccades of the eye. We have to put up things in parallel. Mm. We need big strains. That's how we got the whole idea of a think room concept, mm -hmm. which was a great big that's screen. That's part of your company. Yeah, that's part of the company mm -hmm. now. But we imagine a big 12-foot screen, mm -hmm. and as you walk in with an impossible problem, and as you start to talk, what you're saying gets captured, and it gets iconicized. And how, it, how is that connected, the thought? Well, you're talking, you're talking. How is it? Well, you will either have a fast typist or a stenotypist or, or, or a slow keyer. It's not speech recognition. We're not, you, it, no. eventually okay. it might be. Yeah, so okay. what we're doing is we're, ta we're capturing what people are saying. Now, if you look at a flip chart, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those, those things with the pens, the people mm -hmm. have the bad handwriting, yeah. wow. they get messy, don't they get messy yeah, real do. quickly? Yeah. You can't move it around, you mm -hmm. can't fix. Yeah. If you try to do things on a whiteboard, which mm -hmm. is much better, mm -hmm. nevertheless, how would you expand it? How would you open up that yeah. whiteboard when someone says, oh no, there's like, so what do people do? They quickly ob abandon the only two ways they have of collecting information these mm -hmm. days. And so with a great big think room screen, you can go in and, and put in whatever information They've you need, move it around. They've got CNN now, don't they? they have yes, we have, well, we have John, a much larger got, version can, of it. And they're moving like yeah. that, and you have a larger version. Much larger version, and uh -huh. also, uh, what's, what we developed was a whole bunch of methodologies mm -hmm. that they're, what they are like is they are like the new literacy. Mm -hmm. So imagine an, illiter an illiterate person. Mm -hmm. I've had many illiterate pers people work for me. They're called contractors. Mm -hmm. They would be a carpenter or whatever, mm -hmm. and they were truly illiterate. They couldn't read. They knew how to talk. They knew how to talk. And they knew how to wield and they a knew, hammer. And they knew how to wield a hammer. Yeah. And, and they might have even learned how to use a tape measure. Yeah. But, but they were truly illiterate, and there's far more people who are even functionally illiterate, mm -hmm. which means they got up to maybe four for fifth grade, but they still can't really process well, liter information. Liter we usually mean, if I may, literate, because yes. I think a lot about education I'm and sure what there don't. is in education that has to be taught and so forth, mm -hmm. and how we're going to deal with it and everything. And literate is usually thought about you being able to write, read and write. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's so necessarily important to that. One thing, with literate also it can mean we, we know how to talk. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows how to talk, and you weren't taught how to talk. That's right. You learned it at your mother's knee. You right. just picked it up. I, th I saw a kid the other day at a computer. I went with some kids that are really computer, 20-year-olds. Mm -hmm. really, he had a kid, seven years old, had a com sophisticated computer. The kid's feet couldn't touch the ground. Mm -hmm. At the chair, he's sitting there well, they playing the, the computer. He was computer playing literate. The, no, the seven-year-old yes. was playing the computer yeah. like Vladimir Horowitz plays the piano. Yes, it was chagrining and uh, yeah. also encouraging at mm -hmm. the same time, because right. it's getting complicated. Could we get back maybe to that idea? Sure, you yeah. talked like Moore's law, you know, doubles and that in silicon. Mm. And we're getting down now, if I understand, I help you to set me straight because you're on the cutting edge of understanding mm. that. Is there a role for carbon 60? Is mm. there a role for something that is going to be uh, relevant to computing uh, beyond the silicon chip? I hear of carbon 60 that's going to have great properties for moving information, even more advanced than silicon. We're going to get down beyond, uh, you were familiar, hmm. in the beginning uh, vacuum tubes filled this room to get hmm. 8K of memory or right, something. Right. Now it's on a chip and it's getting smaller and it's going to get down to molecular. Yes. It's going to get down to molecular yes. for that. Is there going to be an advance in the rate of the movement, the exponential, well, well, or well, near exponential movement of our ability to have information technologies that are going to have wondrous effects or uh, incredibly strong effects upon all of our human institutions? Sure. Well, well I think you, when you have this exponential curve, it looks like a hockey almost. stick. Yeah. yeah. This, uh, this exponential curve. Yeah. What you got to realize is it's the bottom part of another S-shaped curve that looks like this. Okay. Where's that and going? So, okay. Where well, is that? Going when steady when, state when they, where are you going? years ago years yeah. ago they would say that gee at the rate the railroads were being built yeah there'd be no place to walk every square foot of space would be tracked they also said that they the, did yes they did how and could they have thought that well because they were looking at the exponential increase of railroad, railroad. mileage okay you know, or old technology Paul Ed yeah Ehrlich. now now when they had uh, when they had uh, uh, when they had well, the phones, when the no. phones were growing, yeah. they said, "You know, it's going to be such so so. We're going to need so many operators. Everyone's going to have to be an Lily operator." Lily Tomlin, everywhere, and we are an operator. Mm. Every one of us is an operator because uh, we all now done with switching all those switching, and we are our own operators. Mm -hmm. I was at Bell Labs and when they were developing that. Uh -huh. So so basically, to answer your question, 
Uh, we are clearly reaching Moore's limit in about uh, oh four to eight years of out. what we're using silicon. Are you rec are you aware of carbon sixty? Yes, but and in, its implications. Right, but and is it oversold or is it relevant? Or well, what, what we're talking about is we have to go to another te another technologies and the technologies that we're looking at, uh, like back in my thesis days, were going three dimensional. So yeah. how would you build? So if we could build silicon three dimensional, mm. silicon would have much longer to go. Yeah. Not quite in the normal. Moore's law, but now you're going three. You're going uh, yeah. three-dimensional instead of two-dimensional. Okay. Uh, there's nanotech. Nanotech. There's I there's think that there's biological uh, molecules and being able to use proteins and build computers out of that. Is nanotech to carbon sixty? Yes. Or Buckminster yes. Fullerene. It's uh, it carbon. Is, carbon. It's the basis for That's that. right. That's right. We're, now we're that's significant, and maybe it's worth to talk about mm. because nanotechnology is going to provide. If I'm not mistaken, mm. you're involved in this directly. Mm. Uh, we're going to have building materials thousand times stronger than steel and hundred times less weight. That's right. It's going to be in architecture. Everything is going to be huge. Nanotechnology. We're, nanotech working, we're working with a company now building nano fibers. Okay. That uh, are so strong mm -hmm. that they are going to. We're we're, we're trying to uh, apply for. Uh, NASA is building a space elevator. Mm. This is an elevator oh, that goes elevator, all the way. Really? And so how could you build a mm. structure to yeah. go out and yeah. handle the winds and yeah. so forth? Yeah. And the way you do this is you use nanotechnology. Okay. So yeah. nanotechnology is something which, uh, in fact, there's been many nanotechnology conferences around the world. Mm -hmm. In New York, we recently had several of them. Mm -hmm. In Washington, they're having them. But the issue there is, uh, is is what is going to be real. Like in the early days, which mm -hmm. was Drexler, mm -hmm. he was talking about yeah. nanorobots, nanomachines, and wow. that fell out of grace quite, a, quite early, okay. yes. Yeah. Uh, but now the issue is whether or not we're going to be able to take nanotechnology mm -hmm. and apply it in other than silly ways, or rather frivolous yeah. ways. For yeah. example, clothing that changes its pattern when right. you flip a switch, or mm -hmm. wallpaper, and so on. Oh. But so there's the structural, as you mentioned, and, and building something like the space elevator would be the ultimate example of yeah. that. And then, of course, there's use in computational devices. E exactly. And, Thank and you. And it's going to be down, if I may. Mm. Sounds, it sounds to me like I've talked with Kurzweil. And it's going to be uh, the basis. Uh, this Buckminster Fullerene and Carbon 60 has uh, qualities that are going to, it's going to become, replace silicon mm -hmm. as the basic item of which the information technology and its properties are such that it's so efficient that it's going to be um, there and it's going to be molecular. Mm. It's uh, yes, everything. It's going to. It's going to. It's going to. It's an It's definitely an going on the molecular scale. It's going to go through the bloodstream. Yes. Yes. And it's going to be the basis for our yeah. our, our cyber development. Mm -hmm. You say nine, six years out. Well, I as I said, we have to, we have to merging in three years. We so. need something that's going to go beyond Moore's Silicon. law, which and ends about Moore's, it, law, Moore's right. law. Because mm -hmm. when I'm talking to you about computers that might be sentient and so forth, yeah. we're talking 30, 40 years from now. Remember how Moore's law wa works? You can remember it easily as doubling roughly every 18 yeah, months, months, but yeah. it's easier to f think of it as it goes factor of 10 every five years. Okay. So if the we're factor looking, factor of 10 comes in. Yeah. Again, so yeah. so yeah, the factor mm -hmm. of 10. So if we go out, if we go out 30 years, that's five. That's a six times five. That's 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 ten times ten times ten six times. That's a million to mm -hmm. one. So the computers thirty years from now are going to be a million times. But that's not the key. That's not what's, what's going key? on. What is the, the key? The key is how can we program them? We could mm -hmm. take today's computers mm -hmm. and get them to operate incredibly beyond what they are. In mm -hmm. fact, we have a whole project now we're working with a, a number of clients to understand this is a very difficult problem. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. An ant mm -hmm. is one million for your weight. Oh, okay. Go and ahead. therefore, an ant has one million for the, s the brain that you have. Mm -hmm. It has one million for the number of neurons you have. So okay. instead of being a hundred billion, uh -huh. that's going to be a hundred million okay. neurons that uh -huh. an ant has. Uh -huh. And yet, we and we have computers which are far beyond that. Mm -hmm. But we can't begin to program those uh -huh. computers to uh -huh. do what an ant does. But one simple thing, and it gets back to a theme which uh, we started talking about before, but I want to come back because it's such an important theme. Yes. And that is the theme of parallel versus serial. Okay, Today's yeah. computers okay. are, are parallel, parallel are basically, they're basically serial machines, mm -hmm. and when we go ahead and we build, put several of them together, they're still primarily serial machines working in parallel. Is that called parallel. parallel processing? No, no, parallel processing of serial machines. Okay. But uh -huh. when, we, when we're looking at an ant, or we're looking at our own human brain, mm -hmm. we're dealing with truly parallel processing going on. Okay. And it's going on at an incredibly slow speed. It's going oh. on at, at, at one millionth the speed of a computer, or mm -hmm. one hundred thousandth the speed of a computer, mm -hmm. but we have a million, ten million times more 
neurons, okay? okay? Uh, With the more, more, more processors, more processors, right. Through the, pr through the process of evolution. You're right, so we basically. Still have, we still have the reptilian core. We still have, and yeah. we still have the, uh, the amygdala, right. uh, and then we have the front, yeah. Right, but why and we can't build a computer to do what a fly does, or what an ant does, mm -hmm. and so on, is that the architecture of the computer <laughs> is, are these serial machines, uh -huh. or very simply hooked up parallel serial machines. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is we need to get to the point where we have parallel machines. Mm -hmm. Now the problem when you get to parallel machines is that it causes humans to have to get to a point that they feel very uncomfortable about and it's called letting go. Mm -hmm. when, some f when systems reach a certain level of complexity, you cannot program them. Mm -hmm. You cannot think of every possibility that can go wrong. Right. All you can do is to create this structure, and so imagine that you have Reach this... Reach the button and sit back. Yeah, <laughs> you, you have this great big parallel yeah, machine, yeah. you hook it up to the internet, and uh -huh. it starts learning. Uh -huh. And what yeah. does it learn, and how does it, how does it organize that information? Letting go of what? Letting in, go in of control. Of human letting go of letting control. control. That's a biggie. It's that's like, like a parent letting go of a child and letting like them the, develop. That's in the the first step, people who have a problem with alcohol, the mm. first step in the 12-step program is you let go and say it's out of my control. It's a higher power. That's a right, higher right. power. That's, a, that's, that's a more the of a theological the approach, yes. That's theological, but yes. it's also psychotherapeutic. Right, right. But this is a different... And it's also difficult. Yes, it's very difficult. Because that's your ego. It's very... You're letting go of your ego. But yeah. here, in, in this case, obviously, you can imagine the litigation issues. I remember oh, we were, when we were ego. first devel developing microprocessors to c control elevators and yeah, power plants right, and right. whatever, yeah. one always wondered, you know, what yeah. would happen or when yeah. they first did airplanes and mm -hmm. you had electric wires mm -hmm. instead of cables, mechanical yeah, things. Right. So letting go is something that the human species has done. Letting go of the old, do we subsume? We've subsumed the reptilian core mm -hmm. in terms of evolution. Well, although mean, it still drives us it tremendously. It still drives us tremendously at a certain mm -hmm. level. And then we, we didn't, let, we didn't uh, uh, abandon mm -hmm. it, we subsumed it. So if we're looking and applying your thought to that, uh, to social institutions and so forth, we have a number of institutions we've built up, the mm -hmm. corporation, the churches, the thing, uh, institutions, education, mm -hmm. notions and everything like that. So that's like history in a mm -hmm. certain sense. James Joyce had Daedalus say, history is a nightmare mm -hmm. from which I'm attempting to awaken. Mm -hmm. And it has been for the mass of the people and for a lot of the creatures a nightmare of what would be called injustice. It's very existential. Yeah, very I'm existential thinking. and that sort of thing. But the thing is that we're coming, are we coming now, the human society within the universe, mm -hmm. are we coming to a moment of qualitative transformation uh, in the evolution itself? Because we know now evolution is something that we come up the hominoid line and then we develop and we get 10,000 generations and one of the things I'm very interested in, I'm going to go here talk about it tonight, uh, that the extension of our consciousness through tools and technology is something very unique we're able to do better than beavers mm -hmm. or others. That well, make beavers dams. just they, go off and make dams. I know, right. but I mean, some of the ants are really amazing engineers mm -hmm. and that, but it's done. But we can do that, and we finally reached the point through the geopolitical, social, in, you know, civilization 10,000 years ago and so forth, that we now have uh, weapon systems that the political, geopolitical leaders have had and encouraged development with their control over things political and so forth to get weapon systems where they could get an advantage over another tribe mm -hmm. and then go steal their grain and then grow for themselves zero sum they if for you to lose you for me to win you have to lose those mm -hmm. kind of things all based on the concept that there's scarcity that we have a scarcity of capability to provide life support to the people of the world and so forth and that that may be we're coming to a time where we have a capability that is able to model that we may have after 10, th those weapons are species lethal, if they're to be unleashed. I do believe that is the well, case well, still. Well, well, right. Despite we get the right. thing and we make a pact with Russia and we, we're going to try and get to zero and we're going to make sure Iran doesn't do any, and we have sure. this and we have all the fighting and we have some strong, a legitimate system in order, but at an economic level it may be that the system that's in place causing itself legitimate, mm -hmm. led by the United States mm -hmm. of America, may not be adequate what the future requires, and they're now talking in the Congress with the Dodd Committee that we have to restructure the entire system, the economic and financial system, in order to have a system that the future requires, that we can subsume the institutions that we've okay, had, well you, but that we can come into a new, a new transformative, mm -hmm. and maybe one of the basic principles of that in a pattern way that Bucky Fuller, mm -hmm. who you and I both admire, sure. and I think all intellectuals admire, mm -hmm. uh, said that we had crossed the line where we may actually 
with our technological capability to be applied to the livingry of the world society and the ecology, we may have transcended material scarcity as an ontologic reality and that a liberation is at hand that has not been characteristic of history. Do you think we're at that point? Okay. I did a program with Isaac Asimov once. Mm. He said this is the generation in the mm. moment of a qualitative existential new reality in the universe comparable to punctuated equilibrium in the evolutionary okay. process of species. The, the problem, Could you address some sure. of those big you, picture you, you've issues? Made, you've mentioned a lot of issues and this becomes the problem and, I, and this is to becomes why these issues need to be put up on a think room screen because what did you just do? You just serially mentioned to me 10, 20, 30, 40 key concepts. Mm -hmm. You mentioned them to me linearly. Yeah. And concept five was important because it came after concept four. But and they're all interconnected. Exactly. Right, but, it's but, it, but, you're, but if you're talking to me, mm -hmm. it's uh, you, I'm hoping that the gestalt that you have in your subconscious brain mm -hmm. that caused you to go off and say this mm -hmm. builds up in mind, but mm -hmm. it may not be. Mm -hmm. That is why we no, need. No, but it doesn't matter if it did or not. It's a reality. Uh, it's, it's like a, a reality. pregnancy. But 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 we have to. Well, we have it a, has a life of its own. Yeah, but we have and a, we have to let go and go with that. Right, but we have a major problem. These have a lot of different issues. And if we can't see the picture mm. of what these issues are mm -hmm. and how they all interconnect, if we can't figure out the pattern of it, then what you said needs to be seen in parallel. So just think of what you said. You, you're talking about... Transcend scarcity, material scarcity. Well, transcending scarcity... That's the pattern. A part of scarcity has to do with where people geologically live. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if no, you have fertile soil... Now you're going into or, yeah, we were Those are the details sure. of the pattern, if I may. Mm -hmm. When Galileo said we're the center of the, not the center of the universe, mm -hmm. he was only let off the hook 12 years ago by the Catholic Church mm -hmm. for doing something that messed with people's sense of identity. They couldn't let go to a new reality, mm -hmm. because, and they couldn't do it. So the transcending of material scarcity mm -hmm. would call into question virtually all the assumptions of all our institutions right. across the board, mm -hmm. and it's never, ever mentioned as a possibility of something that is a pattern that people ought to pay attention to, that, that, that we may actually, at a level of capability, mm -hmm. transcended material scarcity. There is enough for all mm -hmm. and the ecology mm -hmm. for the first time in 200,000 years of human existence. And that's something that should be mentioned once in a while, if not by politicians mm -hmm. or bankers, it should be mentioned by intellectuals and it never is except the we have fuller the problem is, people. The problem is, is the problem that we discovered. You're getting into a problem we call P-land. P-land, <laughs> what is P-land? Okay, P-land <laughs> involves people and yeah. personalities and personas mm -hmm. and psychology and politics Special and interests, power. All of these are the P, no, these are the P words. P words, And okay. prestige yeah. and so forth. And so it's the P words that cause the problem. Mm -hmm. so, so when we went off and we tried to figure out how humans could solve what they currently believe are impossible problems, yeah. we had to develop a whole bunch of new tools and a whole bunch of new methodologies. Mm -hmm. And you know, as I said, the think room screen and something called a concept processor, which gave you a large visual area to move things around. Mm -hmm. These core concepts and constructs, like the one I mentioned before, easy in, hard out. Yeah, ways right. of being able That's to get to essence, yeah. be able to deal yeah. with essence. Yeah. Now what happened? Well, the first time we ran a think room session, mm -hmm. the manufacturing <laughs> VP said something and it went up on the screen, and then the engineering VP said something and went up on the screen, and we drew an arrow between uh -huh. them. And they said, what are you, connecting us? Uh -huh. We've never, and so what happens is, is yeah. that when you have- They've got their identity when you wrapped have up in a specialization. Right. So when yeah. you have methodologies mm -hmm. or when you have new theories, which go ahead and they upset the p, the, 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 the paradigm, p, the, the, the P land. Yeah, they the upset P the land. P they land. All of the P's, the psychology, well, the power. It upset, Hieronymus Bosch painted all those paintings mm. for a reason. People were really upset when Galileo and Copernicus came along and said we're not the center of the universe. Mm. It messed with their sense of identity. Right, so we sent, re centered it. Yeah. But, but so, so therefore, what, what is subsumed it. What is subsumed outdated assumptions. Exactly. So that's when I was starting off by saying that there's a part of me that's a thinker and a part of me that's a tinkerer. Uh -huh. uh, the, the thinking part, the, the ideals, mm -hmm. the what makes sense, the mm -hmm. rationale. Mm -hmm. what, what's rational? What's rational is the concept of global optimization. Mm -hmm. And that's really, yes, and, and, and that yeah. is a key. Yeah, that's so, Gaia, that's yeah, the whole well, system. Well, global now. optimization, right. that means uh -huh. that you're not just, now, what, what where people rationalize irrationally, 
if you want to gear up your harm around it. People oh. are famous for irrationally rationalizing or rationalizing irrationally. What rationalizing they do, rationalizing irrationally. What they do is they locally optimize. Right, they're right. Trying, or but, a particular theory. Right, but there or is or exactly. dialectical materialism right. or or Aryan but the reason why they're able to get a, the reason things. why they're able to get away with that uh -huh. is that there aren't feedback loops coming in mm -hmm. that's saying, okay, you're optimizing here for yourself, mm -hmm. but a day later, a week later, a year later, maybe the next generation, this is going to come back and get you, and so therefore you better optimize more globally. Mm -hmm. So if you're more yeah, the more inclusive, that's why it's not only for the human society. <laughs> But it's also a capability with ephemeralization, good design, doing more with less. We're talking we don't about, have to we're rate talking the about good design. You know, it took 170,000 tons of copper cable to connect London and New York by transatlantic cable, mm -hmm. and that was that was taken care of by a 100-pound transponder on a satellite with Telstar. That's Telstar. Right. That's right. That's ephemeralization, doing more with less with good design. Exactly. We can do. It. We don't have to rape the planet. We don't have to do it. But, and but so it's not only human being could be liberated from a very authoritarian structure of our social institutions. Mm -hmm. They're all authoritarian. Senior vice president, you know, military. It's all military. It's military. Schools are set up with authoritarian ideas and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And, uh, and notions of human nature as being inherently selfish. They will always well, say there can't be enough. Be people are inherently selfish. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be having unless they have a swimming pool full of well-cut diamonds or but something. But there, 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 there is a solution. Okay. There, oh, there, I'm there, glad there is, that. there is a solution that we've discovered and we feel very strongly about. From Bucky Fuller and the things that you God mentioned. God bless him. Okay, we get into something that we've developed as part of our multidimensional thinking, mm -hmm. which we call triadic thinking. Triadic. It's a way of thinking in, in rather than one zero dualities, you, you bring in this other right. dimension. Triadic so for example, logic. Yeah. You'd have black and white and grays in between, and that would be one way of thinking. Or you could have Ryan. this emergent thing called color, yeah. and all of a sudden it's entirely different. So okay. I'll, give you, I'll give you an example of triadic thinking. Let's say you wanted to change people, and you're dealing with this great big big peeland land of okay. psychology and politics, psychology, politics, tunnel power. Tunnel well, it's, it's people. It's, it's human nature, if you want to well, call it something else. Okay. They're going to be included within the larger yes, system. Yes. So, so there's, there's three ways of doing it. You can do it via coercion. Mm. There's a lot of that. And coercion that's would be the totalitarian regimes. Well, that's more that or less what in, his, that's why James Joyce in Germany. history. History, a nightmare from which we were trying. Exactly. It, there were there were kings. He was brought up in that kind of an era. And they that's, were well. That was the era of human history. That's how we escaped to the United States, right? So, yes. so then, then the second one is is therapy, is process, and that's what Woody Allen, you know, goes to the sixteen years, he goes to, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, for the last year of his life, he's now a cured person after yeah. going through. We, so, so we don't want coercion. Thank God for Woody we do, Allen. we definitely yeah. do not want coercion because we see what that's like in totalitarian, Breyer. and we don't want process because it takes so darn long. Right. So therefore, is there a third? Mm -hmm. And there is. What is it? It's called. Well, you see it every time you see an optical illusion. I show you this optical illusion, mm -hmm. and it's a picture of an old witch okay. and I say look at the beautiful girl uh -huh. and you're saying what are you talking about mm -hmm. this is a picture of an old witch I said no look at the old witch's ear and it's the chin of the beautiful girl and then all of a sudden you see it all of a sudden you become transformed it's as if you had a friend and they were your best friend and at one moment in their life they betrayed you and your 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 love went to hate what we have are these instantly transformative moments where somebody gets an aha i'm i'm a familiar wow. i'm familiar with one where you see two faces two faces are a vase that's another one that's another but there, one but there is but one there is one there is well I'll, 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 i should have brought it in and we'll showed bring them in we're going to be in, in touch okay. we're going to have to right. get together so 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 basically what happens is that the optical illusion mm -hmm. is the wow it's the suddenly getting it everything mm -hmm. was there mm -hmm. nothing new thing had to come in mm -hmm. but all of a sudden people get it now in a think room environment you have all of these objects uh, mm -hmm. concepts uh, uh, manufacturing issues competitor issues strategic financial mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. and you're now able to now manipulate them move them around and all of a sudden you put in connections you start to see patterns you do mm -hmm. groupings and what happens you get this thing called an aha oh wow mm -hmm. and it's exactly what you were talking about earlier it's mm -hmm. pattern recognition Mm -hmm. It's where all of a sudden you, you, every, you already know all of this. So what we have to do is we have to sit down and say, what do humans generally know? The leaders, the people, and so on. Mm -hmm. And how can you put it into such a way 
that they get it. Mm -hmm. They get it. it. It is that single out message. You know, it could be Christ's concept of love or love thy neighbor. It's a certain concept that comes out mm -hmm. that overarches all of the others. It's mm -hmm. like a well-written Madison Avenue line. Mm -hmm. And once you see it, that's one thing about an optical illusion. Once you see that optical illusion, mm -hmm. you never can forget it. Okay. It's okay. never out of your mind. Okay. And so, well, now we haven't. Like PR. Well, that we have, like, no, well, it's not. It's, remember I mean, the imagine. Landings Builders Dream Home? Do you remember that movie? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, I, if, it, if it isn't Zam, it isn't Ham or yeah, something. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Well, I used to show mm. people a globe. I actually had a blow up, blown up globe, like a balloon, you know, mm. and, I'd, and I'd show people a globe, and I'd say, okay, how far out does the atmosphere go? Uh, and they'd say, this far, this uh, far, this yeah, far, yeah, this yeah, far, yeah. this yeah. far. And they really skin. thought, and it's it's just the paint yeah, on yeah. the surface yeah, of the globe. Right. Now, one, now, you'd yeah. wonder, how come we've got pictures of the Earth from the moon, mm -hmm. and people still think that the atmosphere goes out that far? Mm -hmm. I mean, you get in your car, mm -hmm. and you drive up instead of across the Earth, Mm -hmm. And in 15 minutes, it's black. Mm -hmm. 15, 20 minutes, yeah. it's black. Uh -huh. You've gone outside the atmosphere at yeah. 60 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. And so the question now is, uh, how does one get something? Mm -hmm. That is, that, that every morning, I believe it's got to be something like, like a religious thing, like a rosary bead or a prayer you say in the morning, mm -hmm. where every morning you get recentered, and you begin to realize the realities that are that are common to us all. Mm -hmm. There could be, it could be the ecology, it could be economics, it could be understanding how many people are on the earth, it could be understanding. It's these fundamental things which mm -hmm. then help us to think better during the day, mm -hmm. these global concepts. Yeah, that's very, very, very yeah. good. And the question is that we have a lot of institutions that in punctuated equilibrium, you have a steady state for mm -hmm. a long time. You had bacteria for eight tenths of the time. And then you have a quickening and then there is punctuated, mm. the new appears and in all its variety form. Mm. We appeared along Homo on our line and so forth. Mm. We're coming to the end of the human experience. We've been here 200,000 years, 10,000 generations, and we're now able at our own hands. Microbes could come in at the level of a, what we'd call natural, just brought up in a thing with some friends the other day. But on the whole, the only thing that would really threatens us in terms of destroying the evolution of understanding Bucky used to say, is there some purpose to biological evolution? He said it was uh, run across, uh, move across the second law of thermodynamics, that all systems closed, move toward entropy to the limits of the system of disarray, and that biology was, a, was an anti-entropy, came to call it syntropic, right. uh, synergistic, anti-entropic function in the universe to bring increased conscious pattern of understanding to the process of which we are a part, up the evolutionary process. Mm -hmm. CERN's just going to take a picture of the shock wave of the Big Bang, 13.8 billion years within a second of its occurrence, 18 point, uh, we're at 13.8 billion years ago. We're pretty good at taking, we're at a point now where we can destroy the entire species, the whole thing, for the first time. Hmm. Not since the Second World War we couldn't do it. Now we've come to an existential new moment. They've still got it, the same mindset, the same institutions that were recorded. And then we have on the other side, a qualitative transformation capability at the level of capability to provide for everybody in a non-scarce mode, that's a major transformation that never can be voiced as possible because it is ipso facto absurd and totally inadequate to uh, rationalize all of the institutions we've inherited out of history. But we're also so at wouldn't a it be nice to have it mentioned once in a yes. while that at an existential level, a pattern level, there is a new kind of situation that we ought to pay but some that's attention exactly what to. I'm saying. And why isn't it? It can't be mentioned because you have of about three minutes. It left. can't be mentioned because of the P-Land type of thing. Well, because of so, our so inherited institutions. But, but, but P-Land also includes pragmatic, and therefore you've got to be pragmatic and be able to understand how would one convince people of things. So there is the aha effect. And the other one is, however, to realize that a tremendous amount of the infrastructures that are in place mm -hmm. need to stay in place. They've created this wonderful we have world to that we have. The history, just and like what the we need to do is we need to create this new seed. So the new seed that we're looking for is a seed that involves collaboration instead of competition. Yeah, among everyone. It's a everyone. seed that involves parallel looking uh, visually at things rather than just serially sequential. Mm -hmm. It's a new seed that's going off and, 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 and recognizing the, uh, the, um, the importance of, of, of intelligent people and what impact they could have in seeing patterns rather than trashing them in, s in, the, in the current educational system. And it also gets involved in being able to think much more globally uh -huh. rather than 
uh, locally. Also include everybody, like the hundred mm -hmm. trillions of a human organ, mm -hmm. uh, trillion cells of a human organ, everybody matters, every mm -hmm. cell matters. Every, we're just not able to realize the capability of every, we have an ability to let everybody realize their full potential for the first time, and it's never brought up as something that's qualitatively different than history. We just argue mm -hmm. over and reify the old outdated institutions Well, people, in the pe people all over the that's globe the are now in parallel evolving quite a bit. A lot of it is, most of it is due to the internet, and it's due to this, uh, this democrat, uh, democratizing of, in, of information and so We've forth. just begun to talk, Robert. Okay. Robert Solomon, you hit it first. Mm. Uh, we're great program, great okay. work being done. He will put his uh, website up and so forth. Be in touch with mm. this man, important person. I certainly want to be in touch with you.